There we go. So take it away, Exana. All right. So I'll share my screen. Okay, and thank you for your presentation of me. Uh, so um, before I begin, uh, usually I like using some music instruments at the beginning of uh, every meeting that we have. Um, I do Zoom groups for, as you said, for uh, for your organization uh, every Tuesday evening at 7.30 until the end of June. So those who watch us on the recording can always pop in and jo jump in and join us. Um, so I will be playing this beautiful uh, happy HAPI, which is hand activated percussion instrument drum, happy drum. Okay, and uh, hopefully the sound will be good. And I will just invite you to maybe close your eyes and uh, uh, listen to the music, listen to the sound, listen to the vibrations and uh, just see where your imagination will take you. I live in Niagara on the Lake and work in Niagara region. I was born in Belarus, that's a former Soviet Union, one of the republics there, or uh, countries. And I'm a professional musician, I'm coming from the family of professional musicians, before I became a music therapist. I have my bachelor's and master's degree in music therapy and also master's in counseling psychology. I have private practice a small private practice as a psychotherapist and music therapist here in Niagara and I worked for uh, um, 11 and a half years in the Kingdom of Bahrain in the Middle East. Uh, I also work uh, full-time uh, as a psychotherapist at the Family Counseling Center of Niagara and uh, my the population I worked with stretches from children, from basically from uh, pre-born <laughs> uh, children, uh, if we can say that, to um, uh, across the la lifespan. And I also work as a music therapist in the hospice of Niagara right now. Um, so to talk about music and why music helps us, why and how music can help, can help us, it's very important to define. And there are so many definitions of music, right? It's all culturally um, related or oriented. What is music for us maybe is not that much of musical music for some other people from different cultures and vice versa. But um, uh, the Sufi message uh, of Nazrat Inayat Khan 
says music is the harmony of the universe in microcosm for this harmony is life itself and in man who is in himself a microcosm of the universe chords and discords are to be found in his pulse in his heartbeat his vibration his rhythm and tone his health or sickness, his joy or displeasure show whether his life has music or not. And our ancestors believed that um, the musicality of our life is what shows when we are healthy. So when we are not healthy, that is, uh, you know, discord, what they called it. Yes, um, disharmony. So why music? Music hearing, sorry, hearing is present in fetuses as long, uh, as young as 18 weeks old. So basically we start working with pregnant women when they are 20 to 24 weeks uh, uh, gestational. Uh, feeling the rhythm uh, of inside of the womb. That's what is happening inside. And babies also hear the sounds from the outside world. Um, even deaf people can hear music because it's all vibration and it is believed that hearing is the last sense to go when we die and it is shown by EEG studies. So it's very, very important um, to, uh, to have something with people who are in a transitional period. And that's why I work as a music therapist in hospice. Um, basically going with with people until their last breath we are all musical rhythmical beings uh, there is rhythm of our bodies uh, there is rhythm of psycho uh, physiological processes uh, and of our lives and of course music is our friend it is non-threatening intimate and trusted friend if we use it um, in the right way and you will understand why uh, we can find music in literally every culture of the world. Here you have the oldest instruments, which uh, basically show that our ancestors uh, were playing music. Those are flutes before even they started uh, cultivating, you know, the agricultural things. Uh, music uh, is believed to be a healing agent in many prehistoric and ancient societies and nowadays also in many indigenous cultures across the globe and we are coming to understanding that it is really um, well in in this uh, term healing agent or it is very beneficial for us for our physiology and psychology both uh, and therapeutic effects of music on psychological disorders were described um, in the 9th and 10th century. And music was actually part of medical education in Ottoman Empire. Um, they were using music in asylums and hospitals um, in uh, 10th, 13th centuries in the Middle East. And now as a music therapy, uh, you know, as a profession, it started uh, more than... 100 years ago in the USA first. Here you see that in 1944, we started first uh, training program in music therapy. And right now we have music therapists working across the globe. And there are more than 300 university programs um, in all continents. Music activates the whole brain and it's very, very important. You can see here, uh, this is the brain at rest and this is the brain's reaction to music. It's activated everywhere. Before the MRI, uh, fMRI machines in the 90s, uh, people believed that there will be one center in the brain for music. But now we know that there is not one. Music activates the entire brain and it shares networks with non-musical functions. And it's not, it doesn't only share, but it's also in, uh, optimizes and improves these networks. That's when we talk about neuroplasticity. And the uh, benefits of music are uh, uh, such as, you know, it improves learning, memory concentration, attention, physical coordination and development, speech and language, reading and literacy skills, social, emotional development, and maintaining all those skills uh, across the lifespan. This is just a small picture how music affects our brain. Again, it's the entire brain which is stimulated and uh, um, activated by music. 
And now uh, we move um, a little bit to talk about stress and uh, not, not necessarily trauma, but stress, which is also part of trauma, right? Um, how stress affects our brain. I will not talk too much of neuroscience. Uh, that's not what uh, we are here for. But um, this is normal networks in our brain. And this is stress networks. As we can see, it shrinks our brain networks. And uh, uh, it's quite old study. Well, we can say that 2008-2009. Uh, American Psychological Association published a study on stress management techniques. And surprisingly, listening to music was listed as number one in both years. And uh, strangely, see a mental health professional is at the end. So I like doing this uh, when I do any presentation for mental health professionals for my colleagues. I like to show this uh, slide that music, exercise, reading, you know, spending time with friends or family, those are the most important things. And uh, as mental health professionals, of course, we have to sometimes educate our clients, our colleagues also. Okay, um, this is very important to know when we talk about how stress affects our brain, our system. And um, because this presentation is for your organization, I can, I cannot say I can only imagine, I cannot imagine through what uh, many of you have been through or are going through. And uh, my old all, this all heart, my compassion goes to those of you who are going through many stressors and many uh, traumas right now in your life because of uh, diagnosis of your children or loved ones. But this information may be very, very helpful for you as caregiver or for you as a patient. Um, what we say, uh, what we call a window of tolerance is... Uh, in the normal, um, our normal capacity window of tolerance is quite um, large, let's say, right? So whatever happening is happening within the optimum arousal zone or within this window of tolerance. All the stressors, uh, normal healthy nervous system upset or a lot upset or we can go into the depressed mode but or depression because this is just uh, kind of like normal upset How we talk about dysregulated nervous system and that's what happens uh in uh, uh, during tough times and tough times any any difficulties that we have in our lives and when it keeps coming and coming and coming and add to these pandemics pandemic that we are experiencing now uh, we may show symptoms of dysregulation undischarged traumatic stress because it is, it is a big thing. So whatever traumatic events are happening, our window of tolerance from the norm, normal range becomes um, narrower. So all the stressors basically are becoming too much on, on the up or on the down. We, we become stuck on the on, uh, which uh, is kind of like uh, gas pedal, right, uh, which produces anxiety, panic, hyperactivity, uh, inability to relax, inability to sleep, inability to eat, inability to think, to concentrate, etc. And irritability and all, all this emotional flood, flooding that we experience. Or we can get stuck on the brake pedal. That is uh, when we experience loss of interest in uh, everyday activities or in activities that we loved doing. Uh, that can lead to depression, lethargy, um, deadness, exhaustion, and basically all these syndromes and symptoms that we can see here. And pain, physical pain, is also a big deal here. 
So let's talk about health benefits of music. It is shown by many, many studies that music reduces pain intensity, pre and postnatal, pre and postoperative. And uh, there are re th there is research, in fact, one of my classmates at the Colorado State University, in the master's program, uh, did her research with uh, um, 207 women who were undergoing surgery for breast cancer, and she found one of those studies, right? Uh, she found that it was very beneficial pre and post operative for these women. Music facilitates post surgical recovery, stroke recovery, reduces stress and anxiety, which is also very, very important for caregivers, for families, and for patients themselves. It improves our immunity, it improves or alterates mood. It increases memory and attention and brings back good memories. It can bring back bad memories also. That's why we have to be very, very careful what kind of music we, uh, we use. It improves sleep quality. It improves symptoms of depression. And it helps in fatigue fighting, which is, I suppose, all these things are very, very important for you at any point of your life. Uh, some physiological effects of music include uh, secretion of immune-boosting hormones, again, as I said, decreases anxiety, acts as a distractor, uh, refocuses our attention. That's why our brain can't attend to two stimuli uh, equally. So if, for example, we talk about pain and then we introduce some other stimuli, uh, stimulus as such as music, playing music, active participation in music, or even listening to music, um, preferably live music, not just uh, recording, then uh, our brain can't attend to two stimuli at the same time. So it kind of uh, not eliminate, it doesn't eliminate pain, but we don't focus on pain as much. And by not focusing on it, we actually decrease this pain, right? when we are focusing on music. Music stimulates the release of uh, endorphins, feeling happy hormones, natural high hormones such as dopamine, serotonin, etc. Uh, favorite music decreases our cortisol level, so decreasing our uh, stress. But the music that we don't like, uh, on the contrary, it induces stress hormones you know really stress uh, stress hormones uh, that's why we need to be again very very careful what kind of music we use what kind of music we listen to and uh, yes if you don't like certain type of music don't listen to it because you will be stressed you don't need that uh, slow music reduces our blood pressure and heartbeat fast music increases it so again what do we need in our life do we need to slow down or do we need to kind of like um, get ourselves pumped with the energy we go from that this is another nice picture uh, on the 12 ways in which music can reduce your daily stress uh, you can start today with music you can you can play an instrument even if you don't know how to play it still you know, the drum is the easiest instrument. Uh, you basically can reprogram your brain with music. Again, depending on what type of music you listen, modification uh, of your uh, mood. You can move with music, um, you know, traffic jam or any kind of waiting. You can uh, turn to music in these stressful moments. Play background music while working, while cooking, etc. Um, relax into music after the stressful long day at work or any long day stre uh, of stress. Dance to music. So everything, anything with music is good. So now what we are going to do is um, I will invite you to... I don't know if you have any drawing materials, if you can just uh, signal to me that you have it. <laughs> That's one of the favorite activities on Zoom that I can do because I can't do much. Stacy, do you have anything for drawing? I'll just go grab some. I'll be right back. Okay, great.
And just okay. let me know when I. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Great. So. Um, I'll invite you first to close your eyes and listen to the guided imagery, uh, you know, relaxation, um, and then you will draw. Okay. This is uh, one of the simplest uh, guided imagery exercise or activity, and one of the one of the, the good ones because it gives you something after tangible. Okay. Let me just. Can you hear the music? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. So please close your eyes and uh, sit comfortable. Adjust your body position so that you experience no pain, no discomfort. And start taking deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Reposition, readjust if you need to and continue breathing deep and slow. And as you sit there with your eyes closed, I invite you to imagine a place where you feel comfortable, where you feel peaceful, relaxed, safe. Some people call it safe place, some people call it relaxation place, other people call it sacred place, whatever works for you. Don't forget to breathe deeply and slowly. As you stay in that place, I will invite you to look around and see all the details you can see. All the colors, shapes, Maybe it's somewhere in nature. Maybe it's somewhere that you have been to or your, your favorite place on earth or somewhere you have never been to. Whatever comes into your mind. And if this place had any sounds, Notice what would they be. And if this place had any smells, notice. Perhaps it has taste. I invite you to reach out with your hand, with your bare feet, and touch, touch anything in this place and feel it. And just feel this peacefulness and calmness going through your body. And whenever you are ready, you can open your eyes slowly and draw what you have seen. Draw your safe, relaxation, sacred place.
Okay, so normally um, during this activity or during this exercise or therapeutic experience, you name it, um, people would chime in and uh, show what they envision, what uh, what their drawing is. So I don't know if you feel comfortable to share or at least to describe what you have seen, what you have heard. Sorry, I'm not the best with Zoom. I don't see you. We can see you. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to make it so I can show my, my drawing. How do I see my drawing? Hmm. I'm just trying to, where would the screen be with me? Like, so I can see my screen. Do you see, uh, oh. yeah, like this, you see? Oh, there, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not an artist. <laughs> None of us are. <laughs> These are um, beach chairs on the beach in Curacao with uh, that's a cold drink on the table and a book and uh, a towel and snorkel and uh, water with uh, fish and an octopus, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that that was my uh, my place. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Great. Thank you. I don't know if you can sure. It's also a place, uh, a tropical place. I don't know if you uh -huh. can see, but it's a pool. It's in the Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, a resort we like to go to. We haven't been in a few years. And it's a huge pool and there's flamingos around. Yeah. There's birds, there's like a little island in the middle with flowers and a tree and there's peacocks walking around and people around sitting around the pool. So that's my Great, thank you. Susan, did you draw anything? I didn't draw anything, but I imagined being by, I also had water um, around me. I had a, a sort of a stream um, we have a, a little stream that's at the foot of our yard. So I was sitting on the bridge in our, over the little stream and just kind of watching the water and looking for fish and anything that might be sort of going by and, and the wind whistling through the trees a little bit, just kind of tinkling through with maybe some wind chimes. So, mm. yeah. Great. Oh, thank you. And uh, you see, you can, uh, it's very easy. You can just, uh, take uh, this activity and do with your own children and you know children they love drawing and uh, i find that the whole family can uh, imagine something and then you share what kind of pictures and you will be surprised how many different imaginations are you know how, how our imaginations are working differently somebody imagines this and other people imagine that and it's, it's really it's uh, it's healthy it's uh, fun and uh, you know it's it's bonding. I find it, uh, it it helps a lot, and it's also you know stress reducing. Okay, so I'm going to back to my slides. So um, I was thinking to uh, do a little activity. Oh, Susan, can you please? Uh, off your microphone. Mm -hmm. Mute yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think I will not show you the example. Um, music is a great, uh, great tool in expressing our feelings. And uh, as a music therapist, you know, I I do we do a lot of uh, playing together with different instruments. We do uh, dancing or moving to music because that is also self-expression and it's also using music and the body. And uh, I love uh, writing songs with uh, uh, my clients or with my patients uh, of different ages and. Uh, it can be as easy as rewriting the lyrics. For example, you know, the classical, you are my sunshine, and you can rewrite with your child or with your family members. Um, 
and you can move to a more complicated things if you feel like it and write your own songs so i was thinking to uh, try maybe to do a little songwriting activity just for you to see that it can be done and it's quite easy this is um, just for me a reminder that i have to share a whiteboard with you now instead of my screen okay so the activity that we are going to do now or the song that we are going to write is feeling song very very easy one and i i like to show it to people because you know it's easy and you can actually do a lot so let's uh, i will invite you to turn on your camera uh, or cameras or microphones whatever or both <laughs> actually i need your microphones <laughs> So the song goes this way, and you were with me on Tuesday, uh, I think we, we have done it, I think, I don't remember now anymore. <laughs> so it goes this way. Feelings, feelings, they are part of me. Feelings, feelings, I just want to be me. And the the pre-composed and pre-written lyrics is i feel i feel when i feel i feel when so let's start with any kind of feeling and uh fill in the blank what we call the activity fill in the blank so what first feeling shall we write about Hopeful. Hopeful. Good. Okay. So for the sake of time and the space, I will just do it two times. I feel hopeful. I feel hopeful. When? When do you feel hopeful? Hi. When do you feel hopeful? Help us. When do you feel hopeful? When some thing when something great happens i feel hopeful great when something great happens when else i feel hopeful when i do something good i feel hopeful mm -hmm. let's do more do more do more okay I feel hopeful when I wake up in the morning and go to sleep at the night. Okay. When I wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night. We'll try to fit it in. We'll have to sing it fast. And one more. And I feel hopeful about my puppy. Yeah. That's great. About your puppy. What's your puppy? Can you show it? <gasps> Give me a second. Aww. Oh, sweet. Is it he or she? It's a she. It's a she. How old is she? She is one. Okay. What's her name? Here, look. Aww, how cute. How do you, what do you push so that we can see what, what what's on our screen? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't figure out what my husband did last time to make it so I could see us. Cancel. Um. Maybe maybe it's now. Um. um. We don't know how to see. Um, up at the top left, there's a little symbol with a little camera with arrows in it. Okay, so that that'll flip it. How do we know? Yeah, now you're back. You're back. See. We see you. Okay. The the dog is flying around. Yeah. I see the dog. On her okay, chair. here we go. Oh. She jumped on the chair. She's spinning. Yeah, there's your puppy, right? Yeah, she's on the merry-go-round. 
<laughs> oh, that's so funny. That gives me an idea I should try it with my dog. <laughs> It's a schnoodle, by the way. Yeah. Schnoodle. Oh. She's adorable. Great, yeah. So, one more for Hopeful. hopeful you, you're you're talking about your puppy, so make it uh, as a sentence. I feel hopeful about the life and the... and my fun... I feel great about... I feel hopeful about life with my parents family and my brother that's beautiful Aww. okay oh. <laughs> okay there we go okay. you are stop trying to kiss me <laughs> <laughs> you, you sit here pup there we go okay so how about we just sing about hopeful today okay okay mm -hmm. okay ready mm -hmm. So we'll start with feelings. Feelings, feelings, they are part of me. Feelings, feelings, I just want to be me. I feel hopeful, I feel hopeful when something great happens. I feel hopeful, I feel hopeful when I do something good. I feel hopeful, I feel hopeful when I wake up in the morning and to sleep at night. I feel hopeful, I feel hopeful about my life with my parents, family and brother. Fantastic! And I forgot to ask your name. What's your name? Edward. Edward. How old are you? Nine. Nine. Okay, good. Okay, so you see, it's doable and it's very, very easy. So you can write whatever you want. Yeah? Just take this song and write whatever you want about different feelings that you have. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, and... I think you can, I don't know if you, you will be able to, I'm going to save, mm. okay, all right, great, now back to my PowerPoint, all right, the next part is, we are going to talk a little bit about singing because it's very, very important also. Uh, singing, of course, we when we sing, the whole body is working, neuro and muscular activity, and the way we breathe influences is how we feel, and how we feel affects how we breathe. So it's kind of vicious cycle, if you say, because if we don't breathe properly, we don't feel well, and that's what happens when uh, we receive some, you know, when when, when we get some under stress or some not so good news we tend to feel if we feel stressed if we feel anxious we tend to not breathe properly we either stop breathing or we breathe very very shallow and for good functioning we need deep slow breathing okay so we can affect how or we can modulate how we breathe and singing helps in it also. Of course, I'm not telling you to, uh, when you feel anxious, to start singing like you are, when you are in somewhere in the middle of uh, grocery shopping, because that will not look good. <laughs> Although, why not, right? <laughs> we can still have fun. But be mindful of other people. But you can still think maybe in your mind. And uh, humming helps. For example, when I drive... 
Before COVID, when I was giving lots of presentations left and right in different countries or different parts of Canada, uh, I still get this uh, anxiety, performance anxiety. So I will hum driving to my place of presentation or, you know, standing behind the stage, backstage. So humming is very, very good because any singing, humming, basically what you do, you uh, work on your... Uh, vagal nerve the long nerve that is going throughout our body and that is affecting our mood and uh, helps in our self-regulation so by humming or singing you are uh, you do the benefits to yourself you self-regulate okay and uh, you are nurturing body you are massaging your internal organs and of course, uh, singing is social experience. We reconnect with people and we reconnect with ourselves and it helps to release some hard feelings or to boost your energy, boost your, you know, your mood. Um, yeah, so what we are going to do now, ah, here, I have another slide. So, of course, when we breathe, we get in more oxygen which is good for our blood good for our brain good for our physical and psychological well-being and uh, we improve our lung capacity now they did a new study during the covid and they say that actually it expands the lungs in post-covid patients and it helps them to in the, in their um, post-covid uh, rehabilitation process and it helps with any lung disease. Uh, we tone our chest wall muscles. We improve our respiration, uh, similar to what we do, you know, what we have uh, through swimming or yoga. So when it is not uh, available to you, you can sing. You are still doing good for your body and for your mind. So as you can see, it's healthier heart, more efficient blood pumping. It calms your nervous system, as I said already. It promotes, promotes relaxation and um, basically stilling the mind and the body to, to keep it still, to keep it cool. And improves our immune system, as I said before. So now this is also a very cool and very easy uh, chant that I like to use during my presentation or during our Zoom meetings. Um, and again, I will ask you to put on your microphones, even though it's not ideal, don't worry about it. It's still good to hear other people's voices. I don't like doing, especially this uh, kind of activity when I don't hear you. <laughs> okay, so the melody is very easy. And uh, the song is easy because I sing and you repeat. And Susan will remember that. Uh, so basically, listen to me singing and repeat the song. Okay? Edward, you're going to do it with us? If I wrote you a song, would you sing your song with me? Your turn. If I wrote you a song, would you sing your song with me? Sing your song with me. Sing your song. If I told you some steps, would you dance your dance with me? If I told you some steps, would you dance your dance with me? Dance your Thank you. 
That's really good, really, really good. Okay, and one last part I want to talk about briefly is rhythm, because again, as I mentioned at the beginning, rhythm is very, very important for us. We are all rhythm. We are all melody, of course, but the rhythm is what uh, unites all traditions, all cultures. And as I said, even sometimes, you know, for some cultures or for us some cultural uh, traditional music may not sound very musically right because we are born in different cultures but the rhythm is always there this is universal it turns off the mind and turn on the body primary intuition primary functions it exists without our thinking we entrain to external rhythm so we synchronize our bodies synchronize, our brain waves synchronize with the external rhythm. And uh, we entrain within our bodies and between ourselves. So, for example, if we play uh, two drums together, we will eventually start playing together, right? If Even if we start not, rhythm, uh, not, not synchronizing. Uh, neurons in our brains are synchronizing also to external rhythm. Our circadian rhythms, you know, sleep and wake cycle, our heartbeat, our breathing, and that's why it's very, very important to know and uh, influence the way we breathe. For example, again, going back to stress, going back to anxiety, when we start breathing fast and shallow, slow down and maybe have some rhythm that's why music helps to focus on some slowing down music and to focus and breathing and your heartbeat will slow down also with your breathing slow breathing slower okay it's really really powerful so um normally we would drum away uh you know in uh, during the zoom it's it's very very difficult so instead of drumming what here i will invite you to take any uh music you know put any favorite song that you have and you don't need to own any drums because you can play drums on your metallic or plastic containers on uh, pants on uh, a table on your body also body percussion what we call okay so just do have fun and see how you can regulate yourself uh, and how you can have fun together with your families okay oops okay so now i will invite you now that we have five minutes or four minutes left to again put on your screens and uh, uh, I mean, your videos, and uh, maybe you have any questions, any comments, that's your time to to have it, to voice them. <laughs> I don't think I have any questions. I, I was um, just hoping to kind of get some ideas um, to help. Um, oh, you've got drums. Lovely. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Great. So good. And do a little drumming. Well, every yeah, Tuesday yeah. night, Stacy. Yes, Asana joins us for the first half hour of our session, and mm -hmm. your whole family is welcome to join yes. us. Yeah. So at seven thirty, if you're around, come anytime. That's great. Yeah, our um, younger son has. Um, sorry, I'm just adjusting the volume. Has um, some issues with trying to manage um, frustration and uh, and anger, mm -hmm. and. Um, Right. And he does enjoy music, so I thought this might be something to maybe look into and see if mm. it could uh, could be helpful for him. Yeah, well, come along like with him. Yeah, absolutely. And you see, when he has frustration, I always teach my uh, little. Uh, clients uh if you are frustrated uh you need to release this frustration your body needs to release it so if you don't have a drum you can drum on anything like i said right you can make music out your frustration and see where it goes and uh 
again in training with the external rhythm if they uh, if you put some favorite song of uh, of your son and he will just drum it out or a song that uh, means frustration for him let him find this song and uh, listen to it and at the same time play it on the drum it has to get out in a healthy way because it can get out of course in an unhealthy way and that's what we don't need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that's a good idea and draw draw his frustration let him draw it let him uh do as much about this frustration and voice it and name it because when we name our feeling our brain kind of like ah that's what's going on with me right we name it it's it's, it's strange uh, uh, the cycle the circle but we name it to tame it when in trauma therapy we say name it to tame it when you name your feeling your feeling becomes less if it is very heavy feeling okay mm -hmm. okay that's great thank you thank you okay and i hope to see you on tuesday yeah okay that's yeah the, you know what tuesday is the next few weeks is is a bit busy for for the boys they have a program right after school mm -hmm. and then right after supper they have um their cubs meetings okay um and that's uh that's about all that our youngest can can manage and, and sure. as a matter of fact it's probably more than he should be managing <laughs> so, but no when i say youngest son i mean ethan but also yeah. He, yeah referring to ethan yeah no i i have no doubt you could manage it just fine no it's your brother that can't manage too many things yeah and i like this yeah you're enjoying the drums well once we wrap up the other program the after school program then probably that would be we'd be able to join in then yeah, yeah. anytime works for you yeah, yeah. yeah. all until the end of june right susan yes okay right at the end of june okay great oh end of june yeah yep. right into june okay until the end of june yeah so you want to do that program yeah i do yeah <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to see you. We have some other kids who join us as well. So you, yes. you'd be more than welcome. That, that would be great. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You're as always amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana. And <laughs> we, we, you, can't. you too. Thank you. And we will reach more people with this recording. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Stacy, is it okay that your son was on camera to share this? recorded after yeah absolutely yeah okay good just yeah. want to make sure thank you yeah, everybody no okay thank you thanks everybody you. have a good night bye. have a great weekend bye. see you next bye. week bye, bye.